Hello, I'm Paul. I'm a second year geography student and I have a mental health illness. Did anything say that make you uncomfortable? Then imagine how it makes me feel admitting it. At 48 years of age, I'm from a generation that told men that showing emotions or talking about feelings was a sign of weakness. So, I denied I had a problem for almost 30 years until five years ago, I broke down at the side of the road. I was cold, wet, alone, scared, and believe me, I cried. Possibly the lowest, yet strongest moment of my life. I accepted that I had a problem and that I needed help. There are times I'm ashamed of, answers I'd sought at the bottom of a bottle, but I didn't want their existence anymore, so I sought professional help. This is why I'm taking this chance to tell you, especially the men listening, that if you're struggling, reach out and take the help that's offered, because God knows the 16 year old me wish it had been available back then. I'm not going to pretend it's an easy fix, I still struggle, I still have bad days, sleepless nights, but my children keep a smile on my face, I write poetry to release my fears and my frustrations, and I'm often seen at the beach, watching my worries just drift off across the waves. My takeaway message is simple, get help now, don't let your illness dictate your life the way it did mine, you'll always find people that want to help, you just need the courage to take that first step, and remember it's okay to not be okay. Thanks for listening and look after yourselves. Hi, I'm Fiona Hearn and I'm a third year English Literature student and I'm the president of the Literature Society. As you can just, just about see, I'm taking part in November this month to um, raise money for men's mental health. Um, this is a really important issue and something that's quite close to me as someone who has suffered with mental health um, themselves. I've had, I've struggled with anxiety and intrusive thoughts and I didn't deal with them in the best of ways. Um, I spent a lot of time on my own and I would sleep to avoid having conversations about it. I then did slowly begin to have conversations um, and I felt a lot easier. Um, these conversations are awkward to get to and feel uncomfortable to have at the start but you feel lighter for them and three years in here at university I've noticed that these conversations aren't as hard as they were in the beginning. They're a lot easier to have and that's really important to recognise. The stigma around mental health, specifically men, um, the values that we're supposed to uphold, that being strong and stable, um, really hinder those opportunities to have these conversations. But when we do have these conversations, when we talk more about them, when we do things like growing with sessions in November or run 60 kilometres, they destroy that stigma, they, they dismantle it a bit more, so that these conversations aren't as hard to have. And that's really important because men do suffer a lot more in silence. So it's important to talk to your fathers, your brothers, your sons, your boyfriends, your partners, and have these conversations because as someone who, who has come out the other end of having these conversations, I, I do suffer still, but um, I don't suffer as much. I don't suffer in silence. So I encourage you to have conversations. I encourage you to um, join a service, go to a service, um, seek help from the NHS or from the uni, um, take up an activity, exercise is a, a great way, um, running almost, but for me it was the conversations that almost saved me because without those conversations with my friends uh, I may not be in the position that I'm in now, I wouldn't be as happy as I am now and I wouldn't be able to mediate my anxiety as much as I do now. Um, so. Happy November. Hi, I'm Kieran Corrigan, a third year law student at John Moores University, and I have dealt with mental health both personally and with dealing with other people. And the truth is, it can have a negative impact on those around us, which is why the initiative our university has when it comes to mental health is so important, and why you should take advantage of the resources available to you. It takes away the pressure from the ones we love and allows us to rely on a more stronger foundation a stronger um, handlebar to lean on when we ourselves aren't able to stand up on our own. It means that we are given the right help, the right advice and the right guidance and it makes such a difference. I have personally experienced wonderful um, help from the team and they're so friendly and so kind. I'm a man of faith. My Catholic faith helped me through my time of uh, struggle and I appreciated all those who were around me and all those who had to put up with me and I did negatively impact other people 
because I didn't at first deal with it appropriately. And it's okay, and it is okay, to lash out and be angry. But be more aware, be more attentive to those around you. It's okay to want to deal with things in a way which other people don't agree with. Uh, but it's important to realise that what you do does affect those around you. And by speaking up and by seeking uh, the help that the university offers, you can make a difference to the, to the lives around you. And it's so important to remember that despite being in the situation where you are, where you feel so down and so anxious, you can still do good. You can still put other people first. There is no one who you should turn your back on. There is no one who you should ignore because we are all just trying to get on with things and we can all do with it just a little bit extra kindness from people. Amen. My name is Ben Jones. I am a postgraduate student doing a master's in counselling and psychotherapy at Liverpool John Moores. My experience of mental health, I, I guess, goes back to about five years ago. I had a I had a breakdown, which was, I guess, partly caused or contributed to by a huge amount of stress in my job. I've been working for about 20 years in communications and I was working in a high pressure job, high pressured environment. And over a long period of time, I'd lost track of of my own health and well-being and I'd lost my work life balance and I was putting far too much of my energies and my emotions and my and my life into my work. And as a result, my, my health took a you know really serious hit. And it took a long time for that to to happen, but when it did, it was pretty dramatic and, and I was pretty poorly. I guess I spent the last four or five years resetting my life, making some different choices and trying to focus much more on looking after myself so that I can be the best possible person, husband, dad, and so on that I can be in my life. I think it's incredibly important for everybody to talk about mental health, but one of the things that I've learned is that there are times when men aren't great at coming forward and saying, I need help. And when I look back to my own journey, my own problems, my own breakdown, you know, there were lots of signs that things were going wrong and I, I didn't speak out and I didn't look for help. So it's incredibly important that we're on the lookout for each other, that men are looking out for both themselves and their friends and family and colleagues and just checking in and seeing how people are because you'll be incredibly surprised how often you might ask somebody, are you OK? And they might tell you that they're not and you might be able to really help them. I guess the things that I do now, I do many, many things every day and every day I try to do lots of very small things for me. So I exercise every day, I go for a run, I spend as much time as possible with my wife and daughter because that makes me happy. I spend as little time as possible with people that don't make me happy and I try and focus on 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 being around things and people and events that give me joy, that, that don't have stress or pressure attached to them where possible. And I've made some healthier choices. I, I haven't drunk alcohol for over two years. Not that that was a big problem for me, but it, it left me with some anxiety and some some stress, so now I drink lots of tea, which uh, which has been good for me. And I just try and really spend every day looking for small ways in which I can look after myself and I can really be kind to myself. I try to spend as little time as possible getting down on myself or disappointed with myself if things go wrong and instead try to be really positive. And I think that and making better healthy choices has made a really big difference for me. My name's James and I'm a first year business student at uh, John Moores University. I would say for me, pretty much consistently over the last probably five years or so, mental health has been something I've, I've always struggled with. To be I think honest. it's important for men to speak up about mental health because for me there's this kind of stigma associated with all that men are not supposed to or, or men to do this which to me it's it's just wrong because everyone should be able to talk about how they feel to anyone without feeling wrong about doing it. A few ways I'd say I've managed my mental health which over the last few weeks has probably been better than it's ever been in terms of moderating this and 
the main thing is that recently I've started been doing a, a charity run for for November, which is running um, 60k or 60 kilometers throughout the month of November, November, which is often referred to as November. And so far, I've covered um, about 20 20 kilometers so far. And yeah, for me, exercise and also meditating is is a great way to control it because sometimes you just you just need time to to think and process everything really.